bonani dumelang aushene molweni lochani ah welcome to the online broadcast of the men of isaka vision johannesburg we are here to provoke you to excellence and we are so glad that you are here kindly get your bible and notebook ready invite your friends and family as we encounter god together there is no better time to see god than now god bless you me Lord that has been my cry for many years I am still crying Lord use me he says my storage is empty it means I've emptied myself of my pride emptied myself of my personal plans I want you to fill me with your own plan and I want you to use me is there anyone in the house who has the same desire? Saying, God, use me. Hallelujah. And the Lord has heard us this morning. I believe he's going to use us mightily in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for that word of important song and that ministration. If you observe for some time, God, we've been praying and God has been, there's a word that has been common to, to us in the past, past few weeks. And that word has been miracle. Have you observed that? Miracle, miracle, miracle. This morning, I want to show you one of the patterns of God. I hope you know that God never changes. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forever. Today, I'll be looking at, I'm trying to give it a title, but one of the things I'm going to talk about is that for every assignment that God gives you, for every vision that God gives you, there is always a provision for it. Amen? Amen? One of the things I'm trusting God to tell you this morning is that your presence at the University of Johannesburg is not a surprise to God. Amen? Amen. It's not that God is just looking down on earth from heaven and say, ah, ah, who is that? I say, no, it's a, let me look for one name. It's Kuzai. And God will now ask angel, what is Kuzai doing in UJ? And the angel will say, me too, I don't know. Because I thought he would go to VUT or TUT or CPUT or UCT. And God says, I'm surprised. You think God will ever do that? I'm surprised. What is this guy doing in UJ? Nope. Believe me, God has known that your path we pass through UJ. And it's the Lord that goes before us. Amen. If God goes before us, what exactly is he doing before us? He's making a way. He's providing provisions. So that by the time you get there, I don't know whether you have watched some of these um, TV shows of treasure hunt. They are looking for treasures, isn't it? But you see, some people planted those treasures there before the beginning of the game. They, you see, and they'll be running, 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 finding clues here and there. But you see, for those who design the game, <laughs> they will just be watching and laughing and smiling. Because sometimes they will run, they run ahead and the treasure is here. Sometimes they will pass it, they won't know the treasure is there. But the people who design the game know where all the treasures are. Do you agree? Amen. Brethren, God is the designer of this game. And he knows where all the treasures are. There is nothing strange about your coming to UJ. It is not a surprise to God. God has been in UJ before you. In fact, the room in which you are staying now, God knows before you. And that is what we want to look at with few stories in the Bible today to show you 
that you don't have any reason to fear. You don't have any reason to be afraid. You don't have any reason to complain if you understand the spiritual principle. Let's look at the beginning. Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, God has a formula. You will observe that in day 3, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 to 13, I hope you know that the Bible is not actually a book of zoology or a book of botany. Of course, it is partially because we see many plants, we see many animals. It's a book of human. It's a book about man. What is the study of man? Is it anthropology? It's a book about the journey of man from beginning to the end. Hallelujah. So in the book of Genesis, we know that the star creation of God, the main creation of God is who? Man. Because when he made everything, he says it was good. But when he made man, he said very good. Man was the center of attraction. Man was the main reason. In fact, if you know your Bible, it said he made man and he gave them dominion over every other thing. Hallelujah. But God did something that I wanted to note. On the third day, the Bible says, God said, let there be land, produce, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants, trees. Verse 12, God spoke, let the land produce according to their kind, trees, fruit, seed, and God saw that it was good. 13, the Bible says, and the evening and the morning was the third day. Brethren, on the third day, God made all the plants. He made the apple. He made the banana. Then on the fourth day and on, on the fifth day, and the sixth day, if you look at the creation, God created the animals. Hallelujah. He created, he said, let there be all the sea creation. On the fifth day, he made all the sea creation. Let the water begin to bring, let there be birds. Let there be fish. Let there be snook. Let there be hakes. Let there be tilapia, whichever one you eat. Hallelujah. Now, God provided all these things. Then at the end of it, before he rested on the seventh day, his final task on the sixth day was to create man. What does that mean to you? It means everything man needed was first created before man. If you have this understanding, you will relax. God created everything. Man needed. In fact, the Bible says, after God has created all those things, he even now made a garden called the Garden of Eden. So, he selected some things he created. He moved some animals he created. He put a fence around it. He called it the Garden of Eden. And the Bible says, God put man into the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. God already prepared everything and he now put man there. So, man did not wake up one day and say, oh, apple. God said, no, apple is there. Oh, grape. Grape is there. Oh, which one? Chicken. They are roaming around. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the God You've been worshiping. He always make provision for every vision. In fact, before every vision. Because that is even from English. That's why we have the word pro. Pro means forward. So, your coming to UJ is not a surprise to God. In the spirit, your success is guaranteed. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. 
God doesn't, God doesn't set you up for failure. It's not the way, the way of God. In fact, if you look at Jeremiah 29, 11, let's look at that scripture. Let's look at it from King James first, NIV, a scripture many of you know. This God and the choir sang his praises this morning. This kind God, oh, I never see your type. I've never seen your type present that the way you do things is so different. The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Can I see it in NIV? God is saying, I know. You may not know. Hallelujah. He said, I know the plans I have for you. What is a plan? A plan, we always come before the event, isn't it? Or have you ever done an event? After the event, you now plan it. Oh, for example, now this Saturday, we are having our academic excellence seminar. We are planning it. We have booked this venue. We have approached speakers. One of our speakers this Saturday is going to be the deputy vice chancellor of this university. We have planned. We are going to print flyers. We have invited some other people. We are hoping that they will confirm by Monday. We are planning. It's not after the event on Saturday that we now say, okay, guys, what a nice event. Now let's plan it. <laughs> Hallelujah. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Brethren, you may not know, but God knows. He, declare, he said, declares the Lord. What are those type of plans? He said, the plan is to prosper you. So when I say your success is guaranteed, it's not a motivational speech. It's a prophetic word. He says, plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and a future. What an amazing God. I was preaching to somebody and the person told me, you know, I don't do church and I don't understand you guys. Me, I go to place to place because I want to know my future. And I go to consult mediums. I go to consult Sangoma because I'm really eager to know my future. And you see, and I speak with my ancestors, they do because I want to know my future. And I said, Prof, don't you want to know your future? I said, me, I know my future already. He said, uh, how? Where did you go? Who told you? I said, my future is so clear. It's in the Bible. I said, he said he will give me an expected end. The Bible says, mark a righteous man. His end shall be well. I know my future is secured. I know my future is bright. I don't even need any prophet to say, oh, your future is bright. I'll say, thank you. You are just confirming what I know. So, the lady was confused. I said, for me, I just read the Bible and I see my future so clear. I see my future so guaranteed. I said, but you know what? I'm not saying those people you go to won't tell you about your future because there are many windows to the spiritual. My own window is the window of the Holy Spirit. Your own window is necromancy. I said, so, but you know the difference. They may tell you that you will buy a car next week. And my Holy Spirit can tell me I will buy a car next week. But you know the difference? My own is guaranteed. Your own is not. Because the devil can hijack your destiny anytime he desires. Because the one that shows me my own future is a higher power. I said, so you see, I have an edge there again. She got confused. I said, so, I don't only know my future, I rest. You remember you told me that you move from place to place. I don't move from place to place. I stand with Jesus. No other option. Ah, okay. So, really, I said, yes, really. Hallelujah. I know the plans I have for you. God made the animals. God made the plans before he made Adam. That tells me that everything you need to succeed in this university has already been provided. When you have this understanding, you won't be moved. But you see, the one who provided it is spiritual. 
And when God provides spiritual things, it takes some level of spirituality to access it. Hallelujah. It's just like your computer or your phone. It's your phone. Therefore, you design the password. Isn't it? And some of you, you know, there's this zigzag password. I will say some of you, some, some of your passwords are so complicated. <laughs> Only you know it. So for anybody to access your phone, he must be able to do exactly that same thing. The same thing in the spirit. That which God has designed is primarily spiritual. To access it, you need some password. That is where people don't understand. But you say, sir, everything I need is here. Yes, but I can't find it. I'm sick. You said there is healing. I can't find any healing. I'm oppressed by the devil. You said I'm at liberty. Where is it? You said this. You said this. You said academic success is guaranteed, but <laughs> I'm failing. Let's check another story in Genesis 21. Genesis 21. This is the story of Ishmael and Hagar in Genesis 21. Ishmael and Hagar. From verse 9. Genesis 21 from verse 9. I'm reading from King James. You can just say King James. Genesis 21. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says in Genesis 21, there was an issue. Sarah was not happy with Agar. And Sarah said, Abraham should chase away Agar. Verse 12. And God said to Abraham, don't be sad because of your boy, your son, Ishmael. Don't be sad because of your bond woman or your concubine or your second wife. In all Sarah has said unto you, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now look at verse 13. Very important. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is also your seed. Brethren, when God speaks, so it is. God is saying, relax, Sister Hagar. I'm going to make this your son to be what? A nation. I'm going to make him great. He's going to be a nation of his own, just like Isaac will be a nation of his own. He came from Abraham. So I'm, uh, it's not going to be a waste. I'm not going to desert him. I'm not going to ignore him. I'm also going to bless him. It's just that my master plan is with Isaac. That doesn't make him useless. So Ishmael will be a nation. And what happened now? Abraham rose up early in verse 14. Now, that was a word of comfort. For Abraham. Because Abraham was thinking, uh -uh, you mean I should send away this, my Agar and this Ishmael into the wilderness? What will become of them? Animals can attack them. They can die in the wilderness. This was my first boy. I can't just let them go like that, oh God. It's a risky environment. The wilderness is a dangerous place. But you know, the moment God said, relax, I will make him. You all know Abraham is the father of faith, ne? The moment God told Abraham, relax, I will make him a nation. The boldness came. Abraham rose up early in the morning. He took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Agar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent them away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. What do you think Abraham would have told Agar? He would have said, don't worry. We have to obey God. But don't worry. God has promised that your son will be great. So God is not deserting you. You know the God I serve. He's not going to desert you. will be with you. You know, a good husband will give many parting, parting words, nice words. And he sent them away. He did his best by giving them water. 
and giving them bread. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 15. Brethren, there are many things in this story I just want to highlight quickly. No matter how much you think you have, no matter how much human being gives you, one day it will finish. Look at this scripture. And the water was spent in the bottle. The water finished. Because some of you come here with a lot of many things, you know, you're the best here, best there, and you came with some, as if you have it all. <laughs> when the journey of life starts, those things that you think you have as reserves, they will finish. The Bible said the water finished. And they tried looking for water. They could not find water. And in verse 16, the Bible says she went and sat over against him a good way off at his way a bow short. For she said, let me not see the death of this child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. He said, now, you know, I can't see this boy dying in my hand. Let me just put him far away so that while he's breathing his last breath, he won't die in my hand. Many of us are full of such negativities. When God says someone will become a nation, how will he die? <laughs> you didn't get it. A guy had no faith in God. A guy was responding to the physical situation at that moment. He forgot that the promise of God is as tangible as anything. Instead of him to evoke that promise and say, God, you said you will make this boy a nation. He said, oh, my son is going to die. Oh, oh I cannot face this death. Oh, let me put this boy far away and let me stay here. He started crying and crying and crying. Hallelujah. She wept. Now, look at verse 17. This is where the mystery started happening. And God heard the voice of the lad. Uh, then I asked, who was crying? I hope you know that women know how to cry. <laughs> Amen? But the Bible says, and the Lord heard the voice of the lad. I always say this, brethren, crying does not move God. If your cry moves God, it's because you miss your cry with faith. If crying moves God, God would have heard the cry of the mother. But God didn't hear the cry of the mother. God heard the voice of the lad, the one carrying the promise. And it's his voice. I went to look at the Hebrew word of this word. It's called kol, K-O-L-E. Kol means voice, sound. Not necessarily crying. So I don't know what the boy was saying to the Lord. I don't know what the boy was saying to God. Maybe he was saying, but God, I'm also Abraham's son. I need water. I had daddy telling mommy now that I will be a great nation. But now there's no water and I'm about to die. But Lord, you said you will make me a great nation. And God responded. Because somebody was talking. This morning, God will hear your voice. The Bible says, and the Lord, angel came. You can give me an IV here or, or NLT in this verse. And the Bible says, wow. The angel of the Lord called unto Agar. Now, look at this question. Angel came from heaven. What did God ask Agar? What's the matter? Are you with me? You now understand why God asked that question. What's the matter? NLT. Say, What's the matter? Another person say, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong? You know, some of you can say, God, can't you see? Isn't it obvious? I've been crying for the past two hours. You're asking me what is wrong. What is wrong with you? For asking me for what is wrong. Because many of us are in trouble and God is wondering, what is wrong? Many of you, you are running everywhere and God is saying, what is wrong? You know why God is asking that question? <laughs> but I've given you Jesus, so what's wrong? I've made provision for you. What's wrong? Hey, God, you don't love me. He said, huh? I don't love you and I died for you on the cross. 
What's wrong? What's the matter? Hallelujah. God was asking that because in God's eye, there was no problem. They were looking for water because the water in the bottle finished. And God was wondering, okay, why are you crying? And God said, don't be afraid. Now, to let you know again, for those of you who didn't believe me the first time, that it was not Agar's cry that caught the attention of, the, of Jesus, of God. It was the boy. You see now, it said, God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. King James said, the Lord has heard the voice of the boy. So God is telling us again that Agar is not you. <laughs> Don't think it's your weeping that brought me. In fact, your weeping surprised me. So I came not in response to your cry. I came as a surprise. I, I, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Now, look at verse 18. It says, arise. Comfort him. For I will make him a great nation. Brethren, I say your success is guaranteed. Amen. God rehearsed it again. There, I have a plan for him. No devil, no family demon can take it away. I will make him a great nation. Verse 19. Then God opened Agar's eyes and she saw a well full of water. Number one. The well has always been there. <laughs> it, the, Bible, the Bible did not say God now gave Ega power and she dug the well after digging five feet and water came. No. God opened her eyes and she saw a well full of water. Brethren, you know, may you receive God's provision. What did Abraham give Agar? Bottle of water. What is God giving her here? Well. Can you compare the volume? Because many of you, as I'll be making a call now for Jesus, as I'll be making a call of salvation, I'm telling you, no matter what the world offers you, what God has in store for you is by far greater. Can you look for that scripture? In, is this in Corinthians? Say, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the mind of anyone. What God has in store. Brethren, store means provision. It's already provided for you. God says, this thing is beyond you. Eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. It has not even entered the heart of any man. That which God has provided for those, for those, for those who love him. Hallelujah. And God showed her. Are you still looking for that scripture? And showed her a well of water. And she filled it up and gave it to the boy. Hallelujah. Brethren, the well has always been there. But Agar was so full of doubt, fear, and she could not see it. There are many people, they live their life like a thirsty fish. Did you get that? What did I say? Thirsty fish. How can a fish be thirsty? We can have thirsty human beings, isn't it? Because we need to go to where the water is. Where does fish live? So how can a fish be thirsty? There are many souls here today. They are living their life like a thirsty fish. What does that mean? They are living their life suffering lack when God has provided. But it took God to open our eyes. The Bible said the secret things belong to God. And God has given 
men the honor of finding it out. God has gone ahead of all. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending. Hallelujah. So, there is nothing new. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So, God is always ahead of you. Before you came to church this morning, he has been here waiting for you. That which is going to happen tomorrow, God is there waiting for you. But you see where the problem is? Is that if you do not connect into the spirit, you may not enjoy the provision of God. Many of us are carrying our sins and the guilt of our sin, the pain of our sin, the terror of our sin, not knowing that somebody has said, put them on me. Not knowing that somebody has taken them to Golgotha. Not knowing that forgiveness has been prepared. Why are you wallowing in your sin? Many of us are giving right to Satan to poke us any way he wants. Because we are still in darkness. Not knowing that light is available. How can you miss it? When Jesus Christ had died for you thousands of years ago. How can you miss it? When the one who created you says, I, have the, I, have, I know the plans I have for you. Why will you live a life of struggle? Why will you live a life of oppression? When deliverance is available. The Bible says, on Mount Zion there shall be holiness and deliverance. The sons of Jacob will possess their possession. You are saying, no, they are robbing me of my deeds. But God said, no. I have provided all these things for you. He went to Golgotha, the place where he died. And he said, only, the only thing you need to do is to receive me. One of the passwords to accessing the provision of God is to be a child of God. John says, in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12, he says, for as many that received him, for as many that believed in him, he gave them the right. I love that word right. What is right? He gives you the right to access the things he has provided for you in the spirit. Agar, imagine Agar dying of thirst, but there was a well of water by her side. How? But it's very true today. Three things I'm trusting God that we're going to do. Because we're going to pray. But I want to give opportunity first. For those who believe that God has plans for them. I want to give opportunity first. The Bible says if our gospel is hidden. It's because the God of this world has blinded our mind. Don't let the devil blind your mind any further. God helped you this far to UJ. And his plan is not to frustrate you. His plan is not to shame you. His plan is to use you. His plan is to glorify himself in your life. His plan is to make your name great. His plan is to make you a nation. And his plan is to receive you to eternal life. So this morning, I want to offer you this Jesus before we go into general prayer. Are you here this morning? You believe what I'm saying? You have been burdened with the life of falling and rising. You are not sure if you die now, you will go to heaven. You've not committed your life to Jesus. You are like that testy fish carrying your sin, not knowing that Golgotha is the dumping site. El Gogota Alleluia 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 Oh, 
fish your sin the provision for the forgiveness of your sin has been made the provision for a successful life has been made all you need to do this morning is to plug into it asking the Lord please forgive me Jesus I want you to be my Lord and my Savior I want to begin this year with you I want to start a new life. I want to enjoy your own plans. I've been having my own plans. But most of the time it ends in frustration. But Lord, I want the master plan. If you are like that this morning, I want to beg you, don't be ashamed. You can raise your hand. And say, Lord, I need you. That's why I came this morning. I don't even know, but now I just understand why I came. I don't know. My name is not in the book of life. I want my name in the book of life. I want my sins forgiven. I want to enter into your plans. I want to begin to enjoy the provisions you have made for me. I'm tired of struggle. I'm tired of pain. Anyone like that this morning, raise your hand to the Lord. And we're going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it's not a shameful thing. Listen. I'm preaching to you because I also gave my life to Jesus. I did what you about to do now. Amen. Where are those people? Please rise to your feet. Where are those people? Rise to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are making up your mind. You are making up your mind. And say, Lord, how can I be living in the weight of sin when forgiveness of sin is guaranteed? I don't know that sin you have committed. The Bible says it's red, as red as scarlet. I will make it as white as snow. Forgiveness is available this morning. And there is joy in heaven. I rejoice with you, brothers and sisters. We are about to pray. Is there anyone who wants to join these people? Don't be a thirsty fish. You see, when you live here, your conscience will start bothering you. Ah, and that man of God made a call. How I wish I stood up. No, you have the time now. Don't let the devil deceive you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. He's saying, no, 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 no. You can do it next week. Ah, we don't know what will happen next week. You don't own tomorrow. Only God owns tomorrow. You are saying, no, I'm not ready. When your God is ready, why won't you be ready? Is there another person who is bold and humble enough to say, God, you know what? I don't care. Let everybody look at me. I don't care. I don't care. I want a new life. I want salvation. I want Jesus. I want salvation. I want Jesus. You see, hallelujah. You know, in this ministry, we usually, hey amen, thank God. We are not asking people to close their eyes. Because God wants to make you into a great nation. We want to see you. We want to rejoice with you. We are going to sing that song two more times. And we are going to pray. Begin to pray as you are standing. Begin to tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I have come to Golgotha. I have come to lay down. I have come to lay down. I have come to lay down my life. Thank you, Jesus. Pray to the Lord right now and say, Lord, I'm beginning afresh. Forgive me my sins, Lord. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus. joy in heaven right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For those of you standing, just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, 
I thank you for speaking to me today. I come to you with all my sin, all my burden, all my pain, all my care. I cast it before you. I ask for your forgiveness. Have mercy on me. Jesus, I believe you died and rose again. And I know that you have great plans for me. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. A new life I just started. I am grateful to you, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can we rejoice with these people? Can we rejoice with these people? Can we rejoice with these people? Amen. The moment you have to sleep, be seated. How many of you gave your life to Jesus last week and you are in church today? Right to your feet. Those of you gave your life to Jesus last week and you are in church today. Let's see them. Let's see them. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Welcome. After service today, I, no matter what, I'm going to have a meeting with you. All of you rose for the Lord Jesus. Fill that form. We are going to have a short meeting, maximum five minutes, to put you also further into context. I rejoice with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And to the old church, let me tell you one prayer point. There was a well, amen, of water. This month of February, you will see your own well. Yeah. It's a miracle season. We don't have enough time to pray. But I want you to know, I don't know that thing that you need to see. I don't know that thing that God needs to open your eyes to see. Let's write our feet in the name of Jesus. And say, Lord... I'm not going to walk this semester depending on the bottle of water someone gave me. I'm asking for the well of water only you can give. Can we begin to pray? Lord, I ask for the well of water. Jesus Christ is the wellspring of eternal life. Lord, I'm not going to live on the bottle any man has given me. This week I'm asking, open my eyes to my own well of water. Grant me access to the breakthrough I've been trusting you for. Lord, quench my thirst this week. Quench my thirst this week. Let there be a miracle. Father, I trust you for miraculous provision. Miraculous provision. Financial provision. Spiritual provision. Lord Almighty, I'm exchanging my bottle of water for a well full of water. I will enjoy your grace this week. I will enjoy your liberty this year. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for this amazing service. We hope that this encounter will produce lasting fruits in us in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you again. Please visit our social media platforms as displayed on the screen for more information about us and our services. You can also share your testimonies and prayer needs through our email. God bless you.